Hey, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. I'm looking back at this video I posted at the end of January, potential trouble with LDAP looms with the March 2020 patch, and 320 of you have watched the video, so I imagine I have a few people's attention. There's some good news coming down the pipe here that's going to give us a little breathing room, and we're going to talk about that right now. Hang on. Okay, so make sure to check out the original video here, Potential Trouble with LDAP Looms with the March 2020 patch. I'll have a link for it in the description below. It's going to show you the first of the two moving parts that are really clearly part of what's happening with this LDAP insecurity issue that's been, this has been going on for some time now. And I show you in a lot of detail the first two moving parts. Now, there's there's a lot of uh, links in the comment section of that previous video that give you a lot of information about this LDAP channel binding and LDAP signing. Basically, dating all the way back to 2017, there was like a potential for a man in the middle of an attack because you're not signing your LDAP, you know, binding. So a client could send, send a password in the clear uh, without any encryption or signing then somebody else could intercept that a they intercept the password and b they could carry on the conversation as a man in the middle and so there's just a lot of really bad stuff around ldap and microsoft set out to fix it and in the previous video i show you two of the parts that get you part of the way there where compatible clients are doing mostly the right thing but there was a final piece that was going to be delivered originally in January, but they figured, hey, all these poor system admins will be coming back and they'll just barely be over their New Year's Eve hangover when we drop this patch on them and it breaks LDAP across the board. So they eased it back into March. And now you can see this article here was written in November of 2019. And they're talking about changes <laughs> They're, they're apparently in the know about stuff. This stuff's being rewritten as we go along. So it's kind of like uh, Back to the Future reading some of these articles. Uh, I've seen a couple of other articles where they were updating them moment to moment. Uh, living document written over time, subject to change. Refer to official documentation. Yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting trying to find the official documentation. And uh, we'll continue to keep looking at this and talking about this until we get clear of it. Uh, a lot of this information is already covered how to uh, see where your problem is and how big your problem is. And so we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about this. This is the key area I want to talk about right here. This big uh, paragraph here in red. First of all, they've changed what they're going to deliver in March. March is going to add new audit events additional logging, and a remapping of group policy values. If you look at my previous video, I was showing you in group policy, these things aren't configured, but in the registry, there are settings and there's configurations already in the registry that don't match what's in group policy. So this patch is going to give you more visibility in the logging and give you more visibility and control in group policy to cover hardening LDAP channel binding and signing. And then most importantly, the March 2020 updates do not make changes to LDAP signing or channel binding policies or the registry equivalent on new or existing domain controllers. Okay, so they're not gonna shut you down in March. They're gonna shut you down in the second half of the calendar year of 2020. So we were kicking the can down the road and I think just based on the work that I've been doing with one of my assigned resources, we have a new domain where we're moving everybody into it and it hasn't been officially handed off to the main support team. So it's like me, me and Mike, me and me and the boys are managing this domain instead of passing it off to our support team. And th the larger environment, which is multiple forests with multiple trusts, et cetera, et cetera is essentially our heritage organization, and that is being managed by our support team. They definitely have a bigger job. They're gonna need all the help they can get, and well, that's what we pay them for. So, 
this just basically gives me more time to look at my new domain and figure out what's going to happen. And we have already observed that we have observed these 2886, 2887, and we've en enabled the enhanced logging. We're getting the 2889 events, and we're collecting those right now in our new environment. So again, watch my previous video, and you'll get more details on that. Now this, so March 2020 isn't going to break us. It's going to give us more visibility and more control. Great news. Great news. And uh, so if I scared you in the previous video, well, my apologies, but I was pretty frightened too. And we've already been taking action in advance of an expected situation occurring in March. And I was already coming to the conclusion, this last part, I keep reading it, that administrators can prevent the feature update by making those changes either by enabling LDAP signing and channel binding now. Okay, so you can go ahead and break it now, turn everything up to uh, 11 essentially. Actually, it's the two uh, registry entry settings in the first video, setting those to two, and then adding a third registry entry and setting it to two. And that'll just break everything if you have any down level uh, insecure LDAP in your environment. And that would even, uh, that would even include unsupported operating systems like anything uh, 2008 and older. Of course, server 2008 is not supported now. I think uh, some of us that are lucky enough to have uh, enterprise agreements may be able to negotiate a rather expensive fee for continued support for server 2008 R2, but uh, that's all just whistling past the graveyard. And there's patches, etc., that are required just to have 2008 play nice with this LDAP situation. Now, so you can go ahead and enable it now, and that will prevent the feature update from making these changes later. So you can make the change now, and that will prevent it from happening later or, and this is the part that had just come out recently since I made the video, by configuring non-default values prior to installing the updates. Okay, so when these updates do come out, you want to have all these uh, registry entries in place at non-default values. And those non-default values, okay, so here they're talking about the additional events that you're going to get. Yeah, I'm trying to find that. I know exactly what we're talking. Yeah, okay, so we're headed down here. So they're talking about, yeah, you get these extra events. And these are probably going to help you find more stuff. Uh, again, watch my previous video. We talk about how to observe these events. You have to turn on enhanced LDAP logging to get more information about individual clients. So, we talked about this LDAP channel binding one. We talked about LDAP server integrity. And we observed that these were set to one on our patched clients. And they have some sort of interesting chart here. LDAP signing summary. Okay. You're going to want to read this article. There's like more comments than there are article down below. <laughs> And I'm still going to spend some time looking at this. So now this is, right, if we don't want to wait for the March 2020 update, enable LDAP and force channel binding to one. Okay, and what that's going to do is basically it's going to configure require signing, but it's still going to enable those clients that can't accommodate that to continue to work. So that's what I'm talking about right here. And of course, if you really get stuck with your back to the wall, you can set everything to zero. And that's off, off, off. So that's definitely, uh, definitely good information for you. I hope it uh, settles things down after watching my last video a little bit. But uh, definitely continue to take a look at this. It's not going to go away. They've kicked the can down a little bit. They're giving us a little bit more control and we still have to come to grips with adding this registry entry and figuring out what we're going to configure it to. But if you configure it to the non 
default. The, not, the default's going to be two. If you just apply the patch, it's gonna set all everything to two. And that's going to start breaking stuff for you. Um, at least from my observation in our rather large environment. We still have many clients doing insecure LDAP binds and carrying on unencrypted conversations. So yeah, we have to address that, that's, that's critical. But what we're seeing here is that at least we can control the behavior. Those that can play nice will play nice and those that can't will continue to work. I would, if you have a lab environment or a test environment or even somewhere off to the side where you can get away with banging on something for a little bit, go ahead and enable this uh, add this registry entry. Notice you have to have some patch already in place and setting that registry entry to one and monitoring your behavior and see how that goes. So good luck. Keep the conversation up. If you have any, uh, any more information other than what I've presented here, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm open and interested to what anybody has to say on the topic and I appreciate your time and attention. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.